profitability ratios. By the end of this video, you should be able to define what's meant by the term profitability ratios. You should be able to identify the different types of profitability ratio that exist, and you should be able to perform some calculations using the different profitability ratios. First, let's start by looking at what's meant by the term profitability ratio. Well, these are ratios that can be used to make an assessment on the profitability of an organisation. Now, there's a really important exam tip here. In the exam, if the question mentions the keyword profitability, then you're going to have to consider using one of these ratios. Now, there are four different ratios that you need to learn and be able to use when we talk about profitability. These are the gross profit margin, the net profit margin, the markup, and the return on capital employed, sometimes calling the ROCE. Now, these are formulas you have to learn and you have to be able to use. But remember, the trigger word would normally be profitability from the exam question. Let's start by looking at the gross profit margin. So firstly, you need to make sure that you can understand what is meant by the formula gross profit divided by revenue times 100. Well, that shows the percentage of profit compared to sales revenue. And it informs an organisation of the gross profit once all the cost of sales have been deducted. This profit only includes the cost of sales and no other operating costs, which means that as a result, it's always going to be greater than the net profit margin that you calculate. Now, as part of that formula, you have to be able to calculate gross profit. You are expected to understand that that's revenue minus cost of sales. Again, remember that will be in brackets and you complete that bit first. Let's have a go and see if you can actually do this. Pause the video while you attempt to answer the question you see on screen. Now, in that question, what you should have done was first calculate your gross profit. So your revenue of 300,000, take away your 120,000, gave you your gross profit. You then divided that by your revenue figure of 300,000 and multiplied it by 100. And you've got a gross profit percentage of 60%. Is that good or bad? We'll look at that in more detail in a bit. Okay, like the gross profit margin, here is your net profit margin. Now, it's very similar. Those of you that are looking at the screen will spot that all I've changed is net profit divided by revenue times 100. Again, there is an expectation that you understand how to calculate net profit. That is revenue minus all costs, or it could be gross profit minus your operating costs. That depends on how you want to operate and work out your net profit. Now, as a result of that, this is a percentage of your net profit compared to your sales revenue. It informs an organization of the net profit once all your costs have been deducted. Now, what we're looking at here is effectively how much profit as a percentage you get to keep. Now, as a result of that, it should always be smaller than your gross profit margin. Again, you'll see a question on the screen. You may want to pause the video now while you can put that question, and I'll take you the answer. So, what you should have done was first look at your net profit. So, you've got your gross profit there of 180000 Take away 150000 from your operating costs, and you're left with your net profit. You divide your net profit by your 300,000 of your sales revenue and multiply it by 100 and you find that the company in this case here takes home 10%. So originally it was 60% of gross margin and now it's 10%. What we're looking at here is the gap between our gross and our net because it shows us a percentage what how much have we got as operating costs. So 50% is quite a lot of operating costs we've got there but we'll look at more detail at that in a minute. Our next formula we need to look at is something called the markup. Now, this is one that people tend not to like and find difficult to understand. Again, you'll see it's gross profit that it involves. So we've got to know that it's our revenue minus our cost of sales. And it's divided by our cost of sales times 100. What do we mean by this? Well, effectively, it tells us what percent we're adding on to our products when we sell them. Making this simple, it's how much we add on once we've worked out the cost to produce that product to help us to pay for our overheads. So this is a profit we're making on each item we sell. The greater the markup, obviously the more gross profit we make. Typically in the world of retail, it's said that 
250% or 2.5 is deemed to be the markup or the acceptable rate of markup. Of course, this does depend by industry and by how competitive the industry is. But what we're working at here is effectively is how much do we add on to our products and our selling price once we've worked out how much it costs to produce. Again, you'll see a question on the screen. Pause the video now while you attempt that question and I'll take you to the answer. So as you can see here, we first have to work out our gross profit. So that's 300,000 minus our cost of sales of 120,000. So we have our gross profit now, which I've actually given you already, as you can see on the screen there. Divide that by our cost of sales, which we've got on the screen of 120,000. Then times it by 100 and we get 150%. So we are marking our product up by 150%, which is a fairly healthy margin. Of course, if we use that retail example, it's still below the retail example by 100%. So not as good as we're looking for. But again, that comparison, we'll look at in more detail. And finally, we have our return on capital employed, or our ROC, as I like to call it. Now, this is calculated by doing your operating profit or your net profit divided by your capital employed times 100. Now this formula shows you effectively the percentage you get back on the money that you invest in the business. What you're looking for here is a greater rate as possible. Now of course the rate you get needs to be higher than what the bank is giving you in interest because if it's an in interest it's in the bank it's nice and safe investing in a business there is a risk for it. So you're always looking for a figure that's going to be a bit higher than what you get back in the bank and the safest option and one that represents a risk you're going to be taken. Again, you see a question on the board. Pause video now while you attempt to complete this question. And let's take a look at the answer. So, firstly, working out my operating profit, my net profit. Obviously, I do my gross profit, take away my other costs, which then gives me my operating profit or my net profit, divide that by my capital employed of £2 million, times it by 100, and I get a return at 1.5%. So you've got to think about there, would I invest in the business if it gave me 1.5% back at the end of the year? That's what it all comes down to. So what do these calculations tell us? We've carried out now the application stage. You've calculated. Now, remember, you've got to learn those formulas. It's probably going to be useful to keep writing them down and trying to recall and remember them. But we need to now use that information to make an assessment because this is where the higher order skills come in and where we're going to get more marks in the exam. So let's look at the data we've calculated. So we worked out there's a gross margin of 60%. There's a net profit margin of 10%. There's a markup taking place of 150%. And there's an ROC of 1.5 percent the question here has to be is how is b business performing in your opinion now it may be useful now at this point to pause the video while you actually think about answering that question so hopefully what you've been thinking about is some of the points that i've made already the gross profit margin of 60% looks fairly healthy and suggests that a profit has been made. That's a fair comment. However, to make an accurate assessment, we need some other information, some other data to make that comparison. So really what I'd be looking for to try and back it up would be some previous data from an organisation, such as Bees, or I might try and look at some competitors, or maybe even look at the economic conditions to see what it's like. Now, of course, I might have a concern the net profit margin is not so healthy as it's still making a profit. However, if costs were to increase or the selling price would have to decrease because of the competition or the economy starting to change, then maybe I could quickly see that profit turn into a loss. We've only got a 10% margin. So let's say my costs increase by 10%, I'm breaking even. If I have to lower my price by 10% at the same time, I'm then making a loss of 10% see where these figures sort of come together and how they all apply. But again, I need that comparison from some previous data to make an opinion on. Is it a good percentage at 10%? If I want to focus in on the markup, well, 150% markup looks really healthy and suggests that B is adding 150% to the cost of producing the honey. And going forwards, it's probably a healthy figure to compare and help me to obviously achieve my operating cost of the organisation. 
However, again, I probably need some data. Without data, I can't make a fair comparison. And I maybe want to look at my competitors and see what they're adding on. There could be some concerns, because if that figure's too high, so think about the markup, if it's a ridiculously high figure, maybe that's going to create a gap in the market for somebody to come in and obviously try to undercut the market and try and sell honey cheaper. Or maybe as a result, customers will try and switch to substitute products. So you've got to concern, be concerned that if it's too high, it may actually offer alternatives and other options for people to try and exploit. Being obviously too low means it may not cover my operating costs. And as a result of that, I could then find that I'm making a loss at the net profit margin. Of course, it being 150% in this example, and we know that the margin at the end, the net margin is 10%, and an ideal figure at retail is 250%. It does suggest that if they were to increase the margin, we could also increase the net profit margin as well. Finally, let's look at the ROC. Now, I think this is more clear cut. The ROC comes in at 1.5%. Let's be honest, it's a fairly low figure. And it wouldn't be tempting many investors to invest their money in, in the business. Why is that? Because you put your money in the bank, you're probably going to get 1.5% on some of the better savings accounts that exist at the moment, maybe even up to 2%. And it's much safer putting your money in the bank and you've got less risk. Of course, you've also got to factor in what percent would you be looking for? Well, realistically, I'd probably be looking for something around the 5% mark. So that's a little bit more than what the bank, and that'll be the bottom end. Realistically, 7 to perhaps 10% would convince me to invest in a business at the moment. But, again, it's hard to make that comparison when I haven't got any previous data. I don't know about the market. I don't know about competitors. And I can't work out what's happening in the market. So we do need more information. Bear in mind that ratios are useful as an indicator, but they don't give us all the answers. We need further information. So there you go. I've drawn some assessments from that. So you can think about that there. They were assessments and information you could pull out of there. What you can do then is make a decision. So to conclude, to evaluate, you need to form a decision. Now, a good conclusion typically is going to make use of some of the data that you've used already. It's going to look at some of the positive aspects of that data. It's also going to look at some of the negative aspects of that data. And right at the end, you will form an overall judgment. Now, that structure is something that you should apply at all times. Writing an exam answer isn't about learning a skill and a technique to answer that question. It's about thinking about a technique to be able to do what the key term says. So a concluding evaluate question, doesn't matter what subject it's in, is exactly that same style of answer. Just like the analysis is about picking out those points. Now, you'll see on screen you've got a series of financial data that I've given you there in the table. You may want to pause the video and Take a screenshot of that screen there, or you can actually download that data in one of the links below. However, what I would like you to do is now try and complete that table using the data that I've given you. Try and remember those ratios and the formulas. Now, you need to do it for both years to make this useful. Once you have got the calculation of the data, I would like you then to try and assess the overall performance of the business right, in its second year of trading. So in other words, has it done better or worse in your opinion and you're assessing. So I'm not asking for an evaluation, I'm asking for an assessment to take place. You may want to pause the video now while you complete this task before I take you to the answers. Okay, what you should have got are the answers on the screen now. So they're your calculation answers. You can see they clearly they're on the screen. What I will do now is I will show you a potential answer that you could have produced. So you can see in my first line that I am making an answer to the question. In my opinion, I think the company is performing worse in year two than in year one. I then go on to explain why. Now, I'm not going to read the answer to you because you can do that yourself. I'm going to just draw out some key points. Notice that I'm picking out financial information, what I've calculated. I'm using the data. I'm also going on to explain what that means. So you'll see in that first paragraph there, there is use of key terminology to make this answer sound like I actually understand business. There is use of calculated data that I've done already, and I'm explaining what that means. I'm also using my favorite word that I love as the however bit. I'm trying to explain that, you know, I don't know it all. There's different sides to the argument. And I go through each point explaining my argument. 
you see all the way through I stick with that same pattern. That would ensure that I'm answering the question and I'm going to pick up all the marks available. Hopefully you can see how this can be used. Hopefully you understand now what's meant by the term profitability. And I'm hoping that you are feeling more confident when it comes to using profitability ratios in the exam. Don't forget that you can always click on the links below to get extra resources and check out the website where you'll find some quizzes to test your knowledge when it comes to ratios and profitability ratios. Thanks for checking out the Bee Business Bee YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Bee Business Bee. Also, give the Facebook page a like. It's facebook.com forward slash B Business B. And lastly, don't forget to check out the online Hiver activities found on bbusinessb.co.uk full of quizzes, activities and resources. And remember, until next time, keep buzzing.